Six years ago, I made a video about trying to forge weld steel to titanium. But this was holding me back from what I really wanted to do, which was make titanium Damascus. That is a United States patent for forge welding laminates of titanium and titanium alloys. You can create some of the craziest color pattern combinations I have ever seen. And because I didn't want to run afoul of any patents, I put it on the back burner indefinitely. Until Jamie stumbled back upon the patent page and found... The patent is expired. It expired in February 2023. No! Titanium! The patent has bloody expired. Which means I'm now less scared of getting sued for trying to make it in a YouTube video and we can try and bloody well make it. I want to make Titanium Damascus so we don't need this anymore and we can get straight to it. No, no, Jamie. We do actually need this. It's basically an instruction manual. Look at this! We're going to need a can. We're gonna put different grades of titanium. Hmm, I wonder what grade. One acceptable grade is CP. That stands for commercially pure. The next, 6AL4V, that's grade five titanium. This patent should hold all of the key steps needed in order to make this happen. So, went ahead and ordered all of this. Grade five titanium sheet, grade two titanium sheet, 50 millimeters by 50 millimeters by two millimeters. That's two inches by two inch by 80 thousandths of an inch thick. We've got a hundred of each, which should be plenty enough experimentation. Step number one is we need to make a can. We're gonna make it from regular old mild steel. All right, 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 right. So of course the shenanigans have already begun. I started making this box from some mild steel flat bar. It's 50 mil flat bar, I ordered 50 mil titanium, and then I'm like, why does it not fit? Well, this is why. You never assume, because you know what it does, Jamie? Makes you look like an idiot. It's, 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 there's an actual saying about it. Right, what's that? It makes an ass out of you and me. Uh, what I assumed is that this would be 50 millimeters. In fact, 51 millimeters, which of course, doesn't work. I mean, an entirely new box. These titanium pieces fit in there oh so nicely. What? Oh, that's a steel piece. <laughs> the titanium ones go in nicely. Now, coming back here, we can see on the second page, the box has two holes. It has one large hole and one diddy hole right there. What is very- Well, you can't say diddy these days. Oh gosh. What that is for? is to be able to purge the alternating stack of titanium alloy pieces with an inert gas while it's heating. We are going to be using our TIG welding gas, which is argon. And on our first box, I put the big hole and the small hole in line. But then, as I was drilling the holes on our second box, I thought, hang on a second. If we're gonna be forcing gas through here and it's just gonna be coming out right in the middle, are we potentially not gonna get enough gas flowing over and purging the top and bottom of the billet? I don't know. So what I ended up doing- Right, hang on. So you're saying that this patent which someone has used for the last 20 years, you're just gonna disregard it and change it because you think you're smarter. I can see why that doesn't seem like the smartest thing to do. Anyway, we'll find out. I went just a little bit under an eighth of an inch and here I made this hole match the pipe that we have. This is some quarter inch BSP, British Standard Pipe pipe. And we're gonna go ahead and weld it on there. We're gonna have a nice long handle and we've gotta find a way to get the argon into the back end of that pipe. So I got some hose. I don't know if this is gonna be the best stuff. It might be I just use water hose. If we grind this down, we can shove it in. Better yet, we use a lathe. That should do the job. All right, now, all our material needs to be dead clean, super duper clean, no oxides, oil, dirt, debris, none of that. This is important when you're making steel Damascus, but when you are messing around with this much money's worth of titanium, it's all the more important. Speaking of which, for all four of these bundles, it cost me 500 pounds, it's like $700. This one little bit of titanium is two pounds 50. Goodness gracious. Wow, gonna be here a while. What about sandblasting, eh? Forget we have a sandblaster. There we go, still gonna take a while.
Grade two, grade five. For reference, we're going to have the outside be grade two. Alternate, grade five, grade two, grade five, and so on. Grade two, grade five. <laughs> there was some dust in it that I tried to blow out. No! Why do I have to be the way that I am, Jamie? Five, two, five. Five, five, two, two. Stop that! Absolute cretin. What was the last one I just put in there? Five, two, five, two, five. Working two to five. five. What a way to make a living. All right, can you remember five minutes ago? Or two minutes ago? when you said that the outside of the jacket is going to be one of these. Which one was it? It was two, Jamie. So the last one has to be two. Yeah, this is the last. This is a two right now, because I wrote it down. But really, it wants one last one, which doesn't help us then identify what the color things are. You know, it'd be nice to have a frame of reference of how the colors look. OK, you could put like a little notch in this bar to signify one side. What rhymes with five? File. Five file marks, OK? Now, a lid. Oh my gosh, I had to stick the... T I sticked the tungsten on the first attempt. Is that where the term dipstick comes from? Uh, I think that's dip sh <laughs> Fortunately, not only do we have purge holes where I drilled them, we also have them all around the edges of this awfully TIG welded box. So we're gonna really make sure that there's no oxygen getting in here. We purge the argon through every square millimeter. It's about to get gassy. It would have been so much better if I'd have just got that hose. Good Lord. Maybe I have some. Oh, look at that. Oh, this is gonna be 10 times better. And it means I can leave the argon bottle exactly where it was in situ of the welders. Look at this new toy we've got. The toy is organization. As you can see, the workshop is looking fabulous, and I do have some updates to share with you. And we have made a special update video just for you that you can see, not on YouTube, but on our Squarespace website. So if you want to see me fix my bandsaw, organize a load of material, and all sorts of other things, there's a little bonus video that you can find there. It was super easy to embed this into the web page, and if I wanted to, I could even use Squarespace to charge you to watch it. With Squarespace member areas, I could have an online school there like I used to have, along with scheduling all of your clients for any bookings that you might take with Squarespace scheduling. It syncs perfectly with your Google Calendar. And of course, selling unlimited physical or digital products. Folks, I know I sound like a broken record, but I sound like a broken record because there are some of you that have not yet built your website with Squarespace, and I really bloody hope that you do. It is phenomenal. It's so powerful, but also so easy to use. Please go to squarespace.com forward slash forge. You'll get a free two week trial. And then if you like it and it serves all your purposes, code forge at checkout gets you 10% off your first purchase. That includes your domain. Check it out down below. That goes on a treat. Just brilliant. A magical block. Get in that pipe. Now we turn on the gas. We need to adjust the flow rate. Wow, I can already feel it. Ah! What, why? <laughs> Argon is. Inert, it doesn't explode. Why did you jump then? I don't know. There's some serious flow through there. Who knows how much flow is good? Now, before this goes in the fire, a very important consideration is at what temperature are we gonna forge weld this titanium together? Something tells me that the answer is going to be relatively vague because that makes the most sense. Why would you give away all of your trade secrets if you didn't have to? See, like this. An inert gas is then pumped in at a selected rate sufficient to displace all nitrogen and oxygen. It says pump it in at a slow rate. How do you define a slow rate? A slow rate relative to what? And these are the vaguenesses that mean that there is a feel and an uh, art to making titanium Damascus that clearly took a long time to refine. And so though we've got a fabulous instruction manual, the belly knowledge is not there. Aha, we have found it. We've got a temperature range. 1700 to 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. Where is the bloody thing? You know the thing, Jamie, where is it? I need the uh, rectal thermometer. All right, had a quick check to calibrate it. Switch it to the old Freedom Heights. Boom. Forge is currently toasty. 2200 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're gonna turn it down a little bit. I'm gonna go for the high end. 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. When in doubt, 
more heat. So the only potential downside of this is, I do believe one of the risks in making titanium Damascus is molten titanium explosions. Have I told you about that yet, Jamie? No, you actually kept that one to yourself. Pros and cons to everything. All right, let's crack the valve. I'm gonna choose a flow rate of two liters per minute. Actually, detective work, Jamie. If you were the person inventing this process, you're likely to be using a TIG welding flow meter just like that. If this is your frame of reference for the flow of argon, you would consider that 25 liters per minute to be high flow rate, and you'd consider two liters per minute to be low flow rate. So if the patent describes a slow flow of argon, maybe this is right. Here we go, chaps. In she goes. Bloody hell, we've overshot it. 2,100 Fahrenheit. Okay, so looking through those little tiny holes, it looks like it's an even temperature in the middle. This is it. In five, four, three, two, one. Oh my gosh! <laughs> That's not good! Oh no! I think I got it too hot! Wow, look at that! Well, that's what happens when you overheat your titanium billet. You make a really expensive puddle. All right, let's try another heat. Given that I've now clearly melted at least some of the contents, there is a good chance that this is a total failure. What I am gonna do still, though, is try and forge it into a block. I've forged in the direction of welding. I'm gonna give it another hit, then we're gonna start turning it 90 degrees and try and draw it out. I don't think it will have worked though. I think it's gonna break apart. Guess I'm gonna now let it cool down and we're gonna break apart the case and see if there's anything inside. Alrighty, so do we destroy a $70 carbide cold cut saw blade. You only just changed that blade as well. Or do we destroy a brand new $40 beautiful large bandsaw blade? You've just changed that as well. I know. You know what, Jamie? I'm quite excited for a titanium fire. I don't know about you. Maybe we can do a little titanium fire. That'll spice things up. Over the 15 years of blacksmithing, I've only broken two abrasive cutoff discs, and they've both happened in the last month and a half. <laughs> Holy motherfucking That's titanium Damascus. It's bloody stuck. And you can see it just like that. And dare I say, it looks like the jacket might be stuck to it as well. I can't believe it. The thing that's special about Titanium Damascus isn't just that it's Titanium Damascus, which is cool enough in itself. It's that you're meant to be able to get some real crazy colors. You can see the ring of the steel jacket, the remnants right there. The steel is starting to take on a straw temper color, but ignore the steel. I want to see what happens to the titanium. grades of titanium are oxidizing in different ways and then take on these incredible colors based on those oxides. This doesn't require acid to etch. That is just simply heat. That's all it is. And we get vibrant purples and blues. You cannot replicate this in steel to this degree. I could not be happier. Despite liquefying some of it, it's worked. We've made titanium Damascus, but it is not over. Making regular laminates like this is one thing, but we have a world of possibility ahead of us because I want to do titanium mosaic Damascus. I want to experiment with other metals. Now that we've got this technique of welding with an inert gas purge, I really want to find out what the possibilities are, and I hope you join us for it please go check out today's sponsor. It was Squarespace. Build your website with them. I can't wait to dig more into this.